So I'm going to exit this game for a second because what I want to do now is exit out and I want to actually show you scoring a practice game so you can see what that looks like. Actually, let me go back for a second and show you where you can do this because this is really, really cool because I'm clicking fast, so sorry. So if you look at the very top of the page of, um, of your schedule or any team that you're on, you want to click the cog wheel at the top, that's settings. There's some really cool settings that you can set up here um, and different things, but I'm just going to click on practice scoring a game. Anybody can do this and I really recommend it. So when I first learned Game Changer like eight years ago, the first thing that I would always do is um, I would, uh, before I started using it, I would score a Rockies game. So I would just use this practice scorekeeper with their players they had in, and I would just practice plays as they happen. And, and just kind of go through that process. And, and it works really, really great. So, um, you know, it's just a way to do that. And, I'll, and we'll do that together here in a second. But now the game's about to start. One thing I'm gonna do is see the little clock that's down on the bottom left. That little clock is actually a game clock. I love this feature, it's one of my favorites. So you can actually click on that clock and set it. Now the problem is that it's set right now if I adjust the time, let's say I do hour 45, if that's my game limit, the way they have it defaulted is it counts up. So if I click it, it counts up, which is really annoying. Sorry, it said my internet connection is unstable. Hopefully you guys can still hear me. So I don't like that. So I'm gonna actually go to menu and settings. And I can scroll down and do different things. So the game clock, I'm going to count down timer. Because that way now I can set it up to clock down. Oh, sorry, it's going real slow. Okay, so I count down timer. And uh, another thing I'm going to do on settings while I'm here is I'm going to go up. And do you see where it says um, pitch count? alert limits. I'm going to set a limits for pitch counts. Now, I believe you can do this in the main setting page, but if not, you can do it here. And I usually do it before each game because every game is a little bit different about what I wanted to be alerted on. So let's say the first one I want to, I know I have a game in a couple of days, so I want to keep all my pitchers at 50 pitches. So I'm going to go, well, let's say um, I may want to start with a 20 pitch limit. And I want a notification when a, when a pitcher reaches 20 pitches. So I click that. And my, I want a second alert at 50. And the cool thing about that is it just gives you the ability to be alerted for certain things with pitch counts. Hopefully that makes sense for everybody. Oops, where did I go? Um, where did I go? Close, got it. Okay, so now I'm gonna redo my clock. So I'm gonna click, I touch the clock, click adjust time. I'm gonna put hour 45, done. And now the umpire says play ball. I'm gonna start the clock. And now that clock is counting down for us, which is great. So now we've got a, a game clock, so we're good. We don't have to think about that. That's one last thing to think about. Because <laughs> I like, I, I'm the kind of guy that I don't like to think about stuff. It's why when I head coach, I use a game changer. I keep score myself because I really like to, um, I really like to know what's going on at all times. So now here we are on this main screen and we want to keep score for the game. We got our lineup set, everything's good and we're ready to keep score. So the first thing that we do, you can see that there's a, a pitch button that just wants us to, it's dying for us to click on it because it's like pulsating for us. So we're going to click that pitch button and it's going to bring up a number of different things for the pitch. So it's going to be ball, called strike, which means he didn't swing, but umpire called a strike. Um, swing and miss, foul ball, ball and play, which we'll talk about in a second. Hit by pitch, intentional walk, catcher interference, illegal pitch. And you can do other things. You can put guys on base and say batter out other. Um, there's lots of things you can do. But let's just say that he throws a ball and then he throws another ball. So when that happens, you'll see across the top of the screen up there, it's going to happen. Now, let's say there's a called strike. So there's a strike. Let's say there's another call strike. There's a ball. This batter is battling tremendously. Um, there's a foul ball. 
um, foul ball. So we've got a big count. And now finally, the ball gets put into play. And we're going to say that there's a ground ball that happens in the infield. So we're going to hit ball and play. And we can say whatever happens. It could be ground ball, hard ground ball. The difference is, you know, if it's hit harder. Um, in the system, it keeps track of how many hard hit balls are hit. So a line drive and a hard ground ball are counted as hard, um, hard hit balls, whereas a ground ball or a fly ball or a pop fly would not be. Um, so it just kind of keeps those stats for you. So you, you like to try to be as true as I can. So let's say there was a ground ball and the runner got out at first. So we're going to click out at first. Now it's going to ask me, okay, what happened? <laughs> what happened in the field? And let's say there was a ground ball to the shortstop and he threw to first base. So the shortstop had to range a little bit this way. So you see I'm moving him. That's where he caught the ground ball. And then he throws it to first base. So now I'm going to tap the first baseman and he throws it across. And when all that's good and I'm happy with everything, I can click done. And when I do that, that runner is now out. If you look at the top, it'll say lions and tigers at the top. Um, on the left, it'll say AB, that's the person at bat. On the right, it says P, which is the pitcher. So number 34 is pitching. You can see right on this page, it displays how many pitches he has. So he's at eight pitches already, um, 0.1 uh, inning pitched. That doesn't really matter for us. It's, it's really about the pitch count. Um, so that's listed and kind of that tells you where, where you are. Now, if I look at this batter and um, maybe uh, I want to see where this batter goes, like where does this batter hit the ball? This is interesting to me. I want to move my defense where I go. So at the very bottom, right above where it says redo, there's a little field icon. I click that field icon and this is the spray charts for this game, which is great. So, um, so the spray charts for this game, uh, it'll tell me what he's done, he or she's done before. And it also has the spray charts for the season as well, which is really cool too. This is a great feature, by the way. <laughs> Um, when I used to coach against Boykin and Deza and some of those guys, you know, when I, back when I was in majors, um, the first game I, you know, some of the important games I have, I, I would print out spray charts. Oh. Um, oh. Hey. So, so I, I, you know, I do that sometimes. And, uh, and now the, the, this thing does it for you for the whole season. Now this would only be uh, spray charts well, for games well, you've uh, played. Are you busy tonight or I, I'm in a zoom call for um, so it's only games that, um, that we've played against this player, but it's still really handy information. So that's there as you need it. So we can go back to scoring games. Somebody chatted and asked a question and they said, I can't ask the page, uh, you're on while looking at my version of the app. Uh, perhaps I need to set up my team more. Um, okay, cool. Uh, so we can talk about that here in a minute. Um, when you do that, you have to set up and score a game. That's the way that you can get to this page by clicking. You have to set up a game yourself. Then you have to score the game. And then you'll be able to access this page. Good question. We can talk a little bit more about that later and troubleshoot it after uh, in, in a little bit. That's a good question. Okay. So now this time, oops, sorry. Uh, now this time, uh, the player, this guy gets a hit. So he, we're going to click pitch again, and we'll stay, you know, there's a ball. Oh, hopefully, my, here we go. And then there was another ball called strike, called strike, and now ball and play. And this time there was a line drive, hit a line drive right up the middle for a single. So we're going to click single. Now we're going to say, where did it go? So again, we need to drag the player that's nearest to the ball. So let's say it was a line drive kind of right up the middle, but just a little this way. I can move Jackson right there. And that's where that ball went. And now you'll see that uh, that player is on first base, which is great. Um, so now we're going to throw a ball. But this time, the ball went in the dirt. And this runner goes to second base. And what you want to do is just drag the runner towards second base. It's going to say, is he safe or is he out? So we're going to say he's safe. It's going to say to us, okay, what happened? Did he steal the base? Was it defensive indifference? Was it a wild pitch? This one was in the dirt. So it's on the pitcher. And we're going to score it as a wild pitch. So that'll pop down like that. Um, so now we'll do another called strike. Uh, we'll do a swing and a miss, foul ball, 
And let's say this time he tipped the ball. So he tips it foul, but the catcher hangs on to it. We're going to say that's a foul tip out. So he did that and that keeps that record. So that batter is now out. So you saw that as an option there. So next we have our next um, hitter that's up. We're going to do a uh, swing and a miss, ball. Oh, wait a minute. We just got an alert. So let's see what it says. Pitch count notice. So this pitcher has reached 20 pitches. So, okay, cool. Good to know. Now we could do something about that. So let's say we want to use this pitcher tomorrow. And we know that our, we know our pitch count rules say if, if he gets to 20 pitches, um, you know, we can remove him at the, at, you know, during this at bat until that player is eligible to be a pitcher tomorrow. So let's say we're going to do that, but we'll click OK for now. And now this batter hits a ground ball, uh, hits a hard ground ball, and it's a single. So let's say it's over in left field. So this guy moves over to where the ball went, there it went. And now the runner from second actually rounds second and scores. So we drag him home and we say, is he safe or out? We'll say he's safe and he scored. And we'll say, that why, how did he advance? It was on the last play. So now that runner scored and you can see our score at the top of the screen is one nothing. Now, because we reached 20 pitches, I say, I, I wanna take this pitcher out because I want him to be eligible for tomorrow. So I click on the pitcher icon of the person on the screen. And I say, what do I want to do? And I actually want to bring in somebody from my bench um, to, to pitch for him. So I'm going to bring in this Martin. Uh, I don't want to do that. So hang on. <laughs> so let's just say I switch him with the center fielder, Jackson, number 51. And I'm going to put him in center field. So I put him in center field. And now here we are. We're, uh, we're set up. We've got a new pitcher. And you can see at the top, it says we have zero pitches here. So you have access to that um, and, and you're all set up and ready to go. And now we're going to uh, pitch this next pitch. The ball goes in play. And what happens is it grounds the second baseman. He's going to toss to the shortstop and do a fielder's choice. So we're going to say ground ball. And we're going to say not out at first because that that's not happened. We say fielder's choice. So we click that. We drag this, the shortstop to where the ball went. And then we drag the second baseman over. And then we say, we're done. And we say he's out at second base. So we click that. And now it'll end the inning. And I say, it'll say, do we want to end and switch? And I do. So now it switches sides. And now the other team is hitting. You can see we've been doing this for 10 minutes because the clock is counting down. So that's kind of an example of an inning um, that occurred. So let's see. Um, great. So we can talk more at the end. Awesome. All right, great. So, um, so that's uh, a little bit about scoring a game initially. Um, does anybody have questions so far about what you've seen? No, okay, good. I bet you guys have scored lots of games before. <laughs> so, um, so now a uh, couple of things that I wanna talk about. Uh, hopefully you've picked up a few things while we're here. Um, let's say at the end of that inning, I realized that I made a mistake. I actually switched to the wrong pitcher. Oh my gosh, what am I going to do? So I'm actually going to fix that. And this new game changer version has a new way to do it, which is awesome because I make mistakes a lot. And you'll see at the very bottom, it'll say score my team opponent plays. I'm going to click on plays. I'm actually going to go back at the plays and look in the past. So you're going to see we, we made that. Um, pitching change after the 21 pitches there. Let's see, where did we make the change? I forget. Um, well, let's say um, that it was actually on this last battle. This is an example. So I'm gonna click edit and it gives you the ability to change the play detail. So let's say I wanna change the pitcher. Um, and instead of Jackson, I actually wanted it to be um, Smith, uh, Smith, the shortstop. So I'm going to switch him and save this edit. And what that does is it changes everything retroactively. It'll change everything in your uh, pitch counts, everything in your scoring at the end of the game. You don't have to do anything. I've had so many times throughout the years where I forgot to switch the pitcher. I was like, oh, I forgot. I forgot to switch the pitcher. And I remembered where I did it but I have to go back at the end of the game and fix everything in the box score so the stats are right. And it's such a pain. Um, so now when we do this, it can fix everything. So if you